What will happen in one hundred quintillion years? Is it possible that your distant great 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 grandson will ask the same question? But he himself will most likely be as dissimilar to you as a liquid T one thousand Terminator from Terminator Two, Judgment Day, as the real Metal Ani from the original film, because he will have to have survived under conditions following numerous great disasters. That is, it is even born, because according to the Doomsday Argument theorem by astrophysicist Brandon Carter. In the next ten thousand years, there's a ninety-five percent probability that humanity will disappear. After seven million years, the DNA molecule will completely decay, so that other civilizations won't even be able to resurrect our biological equivalent. In the next one hundred million years, the Earth will at some point collide with a meteorite comparable to the one that caused the extinction of the dinosaurs, and after twenty-two billion years. Our universe, according to the Big Rip theory, will cease to exist. In other words, people will have plenty of opportunities to once and for all end their days. But what if our descendants manage to avoid all these dangers and adapt to new conditions? What will the world be like in ten to the twentieth power years? To make it easier to understand this figure, I'll give you some examples. One hundred quintillion seconds is two hundred times greater than the amount of time that's passed since the Big Bang to the present day. In one hundred quintillion steps, you could walk through one tenth of the Milky Way. With a hundred quintillion glasses, you could empty all the world's oceans on our planet twenty times over. Two hundred and twenty quintillion pounds would be the weight of twenty atmospheres of the Earth, and one hundred large barrels would be required to accommodate one hundred quintillion bacteria. So, what will our descendants see in this very, very, very distant future? Perhaps it's worth starting with what they will not see. In their reality, there will not be much of what we see as the simplest joys of life. For example, they'll never enjoy the view of Niagara Falls, which. According to some estimates, will no longer flow in fifty thousand years. They'll never see a puppy playing in the grass because over the next five hundred million years, the luminosity of the sun and the temperature of our planet will increase so much so that animals and plants won't be able to live on its surface. And after some time, CO2 concentration will drop below a critical threshold, and photosynthesis will grind to a halt. The inhabitants of the distant future won't be able to witness a total solar eclipse, as after six hundred million years, the moon will have moved away from the Earth so much that an eclipse becomes impossible. There will be nowhere to swim, as all sea water will have disappeared. Far from the city lights, they'll no longer enjoy the glow of the Milky Way, which in four billion years will collide with the Andromeda galaxy and merge with it into one super galaxy called Milkamida. True. By that time, cities and, in general, all living things will probably be gone from the Earth, as the temperature on the Earth's surface will reach 2,060 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 1,130 Celsius, and the conditions will be close to what we see on Venus today. The remaining few organisms, unicellular colonies in alpine lakes and underground caves. Will disappear by the time the temperature reaches 296 degrees Fahrenheit or 147 Celsius. The reason for such temperature disasters will be the halting of the Earth's core, the rotation of which generates a magnetic field. No rotation means no natural protection from sun. The last connection that will remain between us and our distant relatives, according to the BBC. Will be laptops in which the titanium will not begin to rust until after a hundred thousand years, at which time we'll view completely different stars on the horizon due to the movement of the Earth through the galaxy, and there will still be such monuments of humanity as the pyramids at Giza and Mount Rushmore, which will stand for more than a million years, provided that we don't destroy them. Somehow ourselves, all glass will also have decomposed by that time. The infographics from the BBC experts about our future turned out to be so full of events that even the curved shape of the timeline made it barely possible to accommodate all the key events of the expected future. By the way, there's no end of the world on this timeline after ten thousand years, according to Carter, but there's according to the Mayan calendar after five thousand one hundred twenty-five years. In five million years, according to some estimates, there will be no more men due to the degeneration of the Y chromosome, and the IS is no more optimistic. In ten million years, 
when a supernova explosion will shower the Earth in gamma radiation, which will lead to mass death. On the positive side, the colonization of the entire galaxy in 50 million years is noted on the same timeline, which means that perhaps people can survive and find a different way in different places of existence. They will be able to see, even if it won't be from the Earth, some interesting things that we won't be able to see as they won't take place until far in the future. For example, the unification of the continent into a supercontinent in 250 million years, which should happen according to one of these three following scenarios, Novo Pangaea through the connection of Australia with East Asia and the shift of Antarctica to the north, a major through the merger of the Americas and their migration, towards Eurasia, or Pangaea Proxima through the unification of all current continents. They will also be able to observe the transformation of the sun into a red giant due to the exhaustion of hydrogen, which will begin in 5.4 billion years. After a few billion more years, the sun will reach its maximum radius, 256 times what it is now, which will swallow Mercury, Venus, and possibly the Earth. Then it will proceed to turn into a carbon-oxygen white dwarf with only about 54% of its current mass remaining. Finally, it will end as a black dwarf, which will sharply reduce its temperature and brightness, even making it difficult to distinguish with a human eye. But then comes the end with a capital E. This is called the Big Rip, when all matter will be reduced and nothing due to the expansion of the universe, and all distances will then become infinite. However, this is only one version of the apocalypse. We shouldn't be afraid says Lisa Randall, a well-known cosmologist from Harvard, because either people will simply be gone by then or they'll find other potentially inhabitable planets, galaxies, and possibly universes. These theories sound too far out for many, but there are also scenarios that fall somewhere in between. For example, how exactly do you think when you think about love? Is it in words or in pictures? While experiments on the Hadron Collider have not yet led humanity to new physics, this will be possible when higher levels of energy are reached. But the key here might be dark matter, the composition of which is still not known, although it occupies 85% of all matter in the universe. Dark energy could potentially restart the universe after Big Rip, since it creates conditions identical to those that were before the formation of our universe. Then... After a period of rapid expansion of space, dark energy will be transformed into particles, antiparticles, and radiation, which will lead to another Big Bang, and everything will start over again. But another outcome is also possible. Galaxies will begin to merge in 100 billion years while they lose all the gas clouds necessary for the formation of stars. As a result, all the stars will die, only white and brown dwarfs, neutron stars, and black holes will remain in the universe. It's also possible that a supernova burst will occur that will be so powerful that all this stellar matter will dissipate into space, leaving nothing at all. Interestingly, black holes might also explode. This happens due to the loss of mass that occurs when they emit various elementary particles into outer space, a phenomenon known as Hawking radiation. As the mass and size of a black hole decreases, its evaporation rate and temperature increase. The latter can reach values as high as in the sun. And even with that, a black hole lives for more than 150 quintillion years. In that last second of the black hole's life, the release of energy is equivalent to an exploding bomb some one billion times more powerful than the one dropped on Hiroshima. Theoretically, after the last black hole dies in a flash, truly eternal darkness will close over the universe. However, such a scenario may not occur, in which case, black holes will exist indefinitely. Ultimately, in the period from 10 to 100 quintillion years, all these stellar remnants will either be ejected from galaxies due to the accumulation of a sufficient amount of energy or they will turn into a supermassive black hole in the center. After this, only dust will remain from the universe, a few varieties of elementary particles and radiation with extremely low energy and a very long wavelength. Then, after 100 quintillion years, our planet, according to researchers' forecasts, will die, plunge into the sun due to the loss of its orbital energy, if the sun, which has turned into a red giant, doesn't absorb it even earlier. 
To summarize, in the next 100 quintillion years, the Earth and the entire universe will experience many shocks that will more than once put the human species at risk of complete extinction. But people will still have a chance. Will they use it? If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Click on the bell to enable notifications of new videos. And don't forget to recommend us to your friends.